Welcome everyone to today's episode of Life in HD, where we invite special guests to come in and chat with us about human design in real life. And if you're new to this channel, I'm your host, Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design guide and founder of the Human Design Academy. And today we're going to be talking all about life as a self-projected projector, navigating the open heart center, and so much more with my very special guest, Zoe McKenna, who's a 1-3 self-projected projector and self-mastery coach. Hey, Zoe, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Hey, Crystal. It's so nice to be here, and I'm so excited to dive into this more with you. Yay, me too. Um, okay, so Zoe, for people that are watching right now that don't know who you are, I'd love if you could just share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. So I am Zoe and I have been running a business now for around nine years. So I have two businesses. I started my first business when I was kind of at rock bottom, to be honest. I it was kind of I just fell into it because I knew I always just wanted to work for myself, but I just didn't know how to do it. And there was an experience in my life when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And um, my mum actually passed away at the time and I had to move back home to Edinburgh and I was kind of stuck in it and, and obviously really heartbroken and lost. And I was just like, what can I do? What, what can I do in order to live the life that I truly love? And, and that's when I kind of had that permission to be like, well, I've been through the worst now, so I can just do whatever I want. And I know it's quite a, a dramatic experience, but I just kind of felt like I really want to start a business and I don't know what the business is going to be. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I will work a way to do it. And as an investigator, as we'll probably go into, um, I just I just went into research mode and I was like, how to start a business, like went on Pinterest, started putting loads of things together. And at the time I was just doing hair extensions um, on the side as like a side hustle. And I thought, well, I could just open a salon and, and do <laughs> like, <laughs> I could just do um, a hair and beauty salon. I was like, I'd done hairdressing when I left school for a little while. I could just get people in and, and just do that. Obviously I had no business experience and I didn't really know how to start a business, but I always had like a good, strong self-belief that I could do something if I worked hard enough and I, I learned a lot I learned enough information so that's what I did I just I just went right into research mode found out everything I needed to know and got some funding because we had no money at the time and um, I went to like a panel and pitched to get enough money to open like the salon up and that's what I did I, I just opened the salon up had no clients no clue what to do and I just learned along the way so over the past eight or I think it's coming up nine years now I I built the salon up and um I eventually found out what to do learned all the things I needed to know about business and marketing and branding and everything like that and then I I expanded my business and and now it's 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 like a multi-six figure business it runs passively I don't have to work in the business and it's still like a really well-known brand in the area and it's doing really really well and then a couple of years ago I just decided that I wanted to help other people online so I started to get into business coaching and I did I done a lot of business coaching for a while where it was mostly like strategy stuff and then I started to learn more about the kind of life coaching aspects and obviously human design with yourself which I just fell in love with and I just I felt like really connected to it in some way and I just didn't know why but I realized it was the whole self-awareness aspect of it and being in alignment with who you are and then I kind of just had the decision to be like do I want to like go down the route of just human design or is there more to it mm -hmm. and and I realized that there, for me there was more to it like that it was the whole self-awareness piece so I went into do my life coaching certification and just learned more about like um, dealing with your emotions, like emotional regulation and um, just all the kind of powerful and deeper questions that we don't ask ourselves. And yeah, I just kind of fell in love with that. So now that's my mission. I'm writing a book. I'm doing a certification. And that's where my 
my vision is, my mission is, it's just to really empower other people to just come back into alignment with who they are. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's such a one, three journey, you know, doing the investigation as much as you can, and then just going all in and going for it, going for exactly what it is that you want. And I love that you mentioned, um, you know, you have this strong sense of self-belief and I feel like that is so, so important. Um, and I feel like all entrepreneurs in general are kind of known for their delusion in a way, like they're <laughs> the big dreams and, um, I, I don't know who said this, but I'm not sure who, but it's like entrepreneurs need that certain level of delusion or like, and really it's not delusion. It's just strong self-belief to put it in another yeah. way, right. To just go out there and do it because all of it is unknown. It's unknown for stepping into entrepreneurship, starting your own business. It's nothing that we most of us are taught, right? Um, so the fact that yeah. you are able to do that and build a multi six figure business on your own, like that is just incredible, especially being a projector, right? Zoe's a projector. Um, and we're gonna dive in to that aspect of it and you know how she navigated her her business as a projector and how human design helped with that. So I guess um yeah, kind of shifting it into human design. I know we're going to talk a lot about your business and your experiences as well, but um, tell us about how you came across human design and how that's impacted your life as a projector and also as an entrepreneur and mother of three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I came across it in one of the masterminds that I was in and one of the girls kept talking about being multi-passionate and I was like, I'm sure I, that must be who I am because I'm I, at that time I was really confused I was like I just didn't know where to go with my online business because I just like to do so many different things and I just needed direction at that point and when she started talking about it I was like oh, maybe this is my answer like maybe it's going to tell me like what it should be doing so I just ended up again back into the research mode I was like searching things about human design I, I listened to some podcasts and then I think I must have came across your YouTube videos or or something with the obviously talking about it a little bit more and then that's how I found you and because you had a lot of video content and I really like video content because I can I can take it in a lot more mm -hmm. and I'm sure you were like talking a lot about, about ADHD and things like that and and I just kind of found out that I might have ADHD as well at this point and I was like like you sound like really similar to me and I don't know I just connected to you um the way like you had the way that you were explaining things and everything just seemed a lot clearer and not like too over complicated it was just nice and simple mm -hmm. and yeah that's when I kind of I, I found you and then as soon as I found your course I was like this looks incredible this is what I'd love to do and that's how I fell into it all love it and so I know um you know for you with human design it's been a big personal journey as well right um in terms of I guess you could say really reflecting back and helping you um put words to your superpowers so how has human design helped you recognize yourself more and appreciate yourself more as a projector? Yeah, it's been it's been such a such a great tool for me as a as recognizing myself because I do have that I did have that serious imposter syndrome where I just felt like I didn't know enough and I didn't feel recognized my whole life. I just felt like I was always pushing. I was always trying. Even when I was at school, I've just been writing about this in my book, but like when I was at school, I just, I couldn't concentrate at school and nobody understood me at all. Like nobody, everyone just thought I was bad. Like everyone just thought I was a bad kid that just acted up all the time. I was like chatting to my friends and I wouldn't sit and listen because I couldn't because I couldn't concentrate and I was distracted and I was distracted with my own mind and everyone just really misunderstood me because I was actually like a really deep person I was like really caring and I used to think a lot about the world and people and obviously as a projector as a natural empath I used to take on a lot of that emotion to myself so I just felt like like even not just at school but from my parents and stuff I 
I found I, I they just thought I was like a bad child as well at, at some points because I was just like having tantrums or um just acting up and maybe answering mm-hmm. back and doing all the things you do when you're younger but um I just feel like no one really understood me because I wasn't I wasn't in alignment then and I wasn't feeling recognized so I didn't feel like I could share my truth and I didn't feel confident in what I had to say I was very much like what I'm going to say is going to be wrong so I just didn't say anything or Mm -hmm. tell anybody how I felt so I repressed quite a lot of emotion and over the years my mom and dad's block when I was like only nine so I used to remember when he would go he moved to England so we would go on like a plane twice a year to go and see him and I just remember every time he left I would like hold in the emotion so much Mm -hmm. that I would get like pains across my head and it was like like gritting my teeth so that I wouldn't let the emotion come out and yeah over the years I just I've never been a a, able to share emotion even to this day I I still I'm better now that I've done this Mm -hmm. and a lot of other things but I just find it really hard to express emotion and but being now knowing that to be recognized you can you can I'm waiting for that invitation as a projector has really helped me like just not say the things that I when I know that it's going to be rejected or I know that I'm not going to be appreciated and sometimes you don't just have to like as self-projected you just want to say things all the time like you just want to tell everyone everything you know and you get so excited about all the things that you're learning and mm-hmm. you want to tell everyone but a lot of the time people don't want to hear it or you're telling the wrong people and you just meet with rejection and then you're just you you end up with that that bitterness and resentment mm-hmm. yeah and I feel like you know with human design it's all about um you know being in, in the right environment especially for you as a self-projected projector like being surrounded by the right people that are open and first of all, appreciate you as a projector with that open heart. Like we need those (laughs) words of affirmation, but that are also there to listen to the message that you have to provide, right? Like when we're surrounded by the right people, it just makes it so much easier. Like I, and I'd like to hear more about, um, you know, just growing up as a projector, do you know what your parents' types are? Did you ever have a chance to look into that or, and how did that? Yeah, I did actually. I think they are um, manifester and generator and generator. So yeah, none of them are projectors. Yeah. And so how did that, how do you feel that affected you? Like, do you, um, yeah, I'm not going (laughs) to answer for you, but how do you feel that affected you having parents that were, that didn't understand your type and didn't really understand a lot of your natural tendencies as a projector? Yeah, it just felt like, I just felt neglected in a way because I just felt like I was doing something wrong all the time. Like I felt like I was a middle child as well. I have two sisters and they seemed to always like be the ones that were good. And like they were probably (laughs) truthfully (laughs) because they they weren't experiencing all this. And um, they like got good grades. They stayed on at school. Like I was the one that that left school early and, um, just didn't listen to anything that anyone was telling me but it was all just because of what was I was experiencing Mm -hmm. internally and I didn't feel like I could go to my parents to explain that because it would just kind of be brushed off or just uh, they would maybe just say like oh you're being silly or you're being stupid or something like that so I didn't feel like I could go and express how I really felt and i definitely didn't feel recognized at all so um I think my dad worked away a lot and then obviously he split up so it was kind of it was we were kind of broken up um and then with my mum it was just kind of she was just kind of a free spirit type person and she um she was like really loving and I think that's why we all got like huge amounts of self-belief and self-worth because she did always say you can do whatever you want like like just be yourself and don't listen to anybody and we got that good part but then we didn't get like the emotional um comfort from her that we needed in terms of sharing how we feel and Mm -hmm. obviously like I was born 
like eight to eight so it was like the 90s then uh, like when I was a kid so it was like different we weren't we didn't know all of this stuff no one even Mm -hmm. knew about life coaching and like dealing with emotions and regulate regulating and listening to children like at that point it was just like you, you tell the children what they're doing and that's it and that's just how we were but um yeah she wasn't I didn't feel like she was there emotionally for me because so I couldn't go and really explain how I was feeling I just had to like be quiet mm-hmm. oh yeah and I feel like so many people have a similar experience with that. Like our parents did not have any of the resources we have now. Um, And I find that human design is such an incredible tool for helping you like as parents, right? Helping us recognize our children for what makes them different, what makes them unique um, and not try to fit them into this box and have expectations of them that aren't in alignment with who they are, that aren't them right yeah and so and like, my, I've got three daughters and they're all yeah. manifesting generators with emotional oh my gosh. authority so <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> so yeah it's just intense so you're like clearly the universe is trying to teach you about emotions and um <laughs> <laughs> that sacral energy right um yes I know you- I'm like it's crazy <laughs> it's, oh sometimes goodness. it's crazy in this house <laughs> But they give me energy at least. I was going to say, I'm like, do they at least give you energy from it, right? <laughs> they give oh, me plenty of energy, yeah. Oh my goodness. How old are they now? So my oldest is, is 10 and then Olivia is almost seven and then Georgia is three. And okay. it's funny because they're all the same type and authority, but they're different. Mm-hmm. But obviously, when you look at their defined centers, you realize why. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's quite um it's quite chaotic sometimes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so okay, I know I'm going to go like a little bit off topic here, but as a projector mom that has three manifesting generator children, are there any like is there any tips that you would provide to another person that's in kind of a similar situation? Even for me, I have a projector daughter and just one, and <laughs> I find that is also a lot. So if there's anything you want to share, um, on how to navigate it all well what I've realized is I used to think because they were also like active they're very creative minds like they're all very creative in different ways but they're they've always been like expressive <laughs> even as toddlers they were just like I mean the youngest one she just wrecks the place all the time she's just pulling things out and just causing chaos but I'm, I'm, I'm putting it down now to creativity and hopefully she'll be very creative when she's older um but yeah I, what I've realized is I used to think that especially as, as a projector running a business I used to think that it wasn't good when they were around like I had to get them all to bed and then sit down in the quiet and focus but what I've realized is when I'm with them I get all my best ideas mm-hmm. when they're around. And then when they go to sleep and their the energy is now switched off, I just sit there and I'm like, what, what was all those thoughts that I was just thinking? Like, what were all those amazing ideas? So I've just started to embrace that I can work when they're around, but what I can do is just maybe write some stuff down on, on paper or on my notes like while they're there to kind of fuel my ideas and energy and then not feel like I need to get them to bed in order to be my most focused and productive and just just let myself like as well take time out to sometimes I'll just say to them like like I need to like mommy needs to have time for herself and I need to work on the things that make me feel good and I don't want to be angry with you or get irritated so you need to just give me this time and then like obviously the the youngest one doesn't understand that but but Jessica and Olivia do and and they're really like good now they'll they'll come and help me or they'll run a bath for me or they'll like I've made that they're all very independent I've let them do things from a young age themselves so like they can make their own food and like they can make their us like us things so I'll just like I won't feel bad like a lot of I think a lot of parents they feel like they need to do everything for their children but sometimes I'll just sit there like a a queen on the couch and be like (laughs) Jessica (laughs) can you make me a cup of tea and like oh can you make me this and 
they actually love that because they're like mm-hmm. they're getting to be independent they're doing something nice for their mom and like sometimes they'll be like oh I'm not doing that if it's something like that they don't want to do which is fine mm-hmm. but most of the time they're like yeah I, I, like Jessica's loving making cups of tea at the moment because she just um feels like she's doing something good and she feels like she's good at it so yeah. we make her feel like oh you make this tea is like really good and things yeah. like that so just let yourself be like give yourself that space and time as well like, you don't feel need to feel like as a projector obviously we don't have that energy all the time so like I can't just run about after them all all, all the time and and I've just gave them their own independence so that they can just be free to explore and do what they want to do Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, that's so true. Like, I mean, it's learning to, and I feel like what I got from that the most is learning to work with their energy and not against it, you know, not try to feel like we're, um, I'm not going to say trapped by it, but like overstimulated by it. Like there are ways that you can actually benefit from it. And also I, what I really like that you said is giving them that independence to explore and to do the things that they want to do. And that can also help you as, as a projector parent, like, especially when they get a little bit older, obviously the younger one is still maybe, um, yeah, still learning. And, and, um, but yeah, like, especially once they get to that age where they're like seven and, and and up, um, they're capable of so much, right? Like we don't have to do everything for them and like little by little teaching them those things so that they can also help out in different ways. But um, yeah, like I, I love that you're, you get to be that queen at <laughs> times in the house, yeah. you know, like that. Why not? Why not? Right? Yeah. And just to point out, my husband's a projector as well. So we're both projectors. So we both really kind of get drained a lot with each other. So mm-hmm. sometimes we just need time apart and then the kids are just running riot and, and he's doing his thing because he's got a business too so he'll sit and do his business and I'll sit and do mine and we'll just let the kids like run about <laughs> do whatever yeah. they want to do because we both just need that time and the kids just like to do the, what, the things that they want to do so yeah it, it kind of works yeah and it's nice that they have playmates like it's the three of them so they can all keep each other entertained I'm sure it wasn't easy at the beginning but <laughs> yeah no um, yeah it's like some they do fight but they most of the time they're they get on well they're not but they obviously they, like any siblings they do have their their arguments and choose who they want to be friends with that day and yeah yeah, yeah. the the typical kid stuff yeah. right yeah. yeah the bickering yeah um so I guess I'm going to shift back into I guess learning more about your design and how you live as a self-projected projector, or at least how you experience um, your your aura, right? So if you could describe to all of us non-self-projected projectors, what's it like to be you? What's it like to be a self-projected projector in a couple sentences? Overwhelming. <laughs> I think sometimes <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's just being self-projected, but, or if it's other parts of my chart but like I'm always in my head like all the time I'm just thinking thoughts and and I really need to I'd say projected like you just need to say things all the time like you need to just release release you get a release from talking so you probably know like by the yeah. now like I just talk and talk and I it really does just like it's like breathing for some people mm-hmm. it just like if I have something that's bothering me Like if there's something that I'm not happy with or I'm thinking about or I'm not sure on, as soon as I speak it out to someone, like it just goes away. Like I either get the answer or I just stop thinking or worrying about it and all that stress goes away. And it's quite hard like as a a wife, as a self-projected projector, because like a lot of the time, especially when I had kids at, at the start, like I would I'd start off as the when you first have kids you're you become a little bit of a nag and you're just like moaning about everything <laughs> you're, you're kind of like I'm doing all of this and I'm doing all of that and, and I just wanted to come home and just rant everything off and just say everything I didn't I wasn't blaming my husband for not being there I just needed to talk it out mm-hmm. and just let off my chest but obviously he doesn't and I didn't even know human design then but I just kind of 
he he just thinks she's getting moaned and it's all about him and and like obviously he's like why are you why are you just moaning all the time about everything and but obviously as we've navigated and learned now I just it, it's quite hard actually with my husband because I'm kind of I have that resistance with the recognition with him I think because we're both projectors having that recognition with each other is really difficult because we both mm-hmm. kind of sometimes are in that like competition with each other like who's doing more and who's doing enough like it mm-hmm. kind of gets like that but so I have a lot of resistance in terms of um feeling that recognition from him in terms of the online business because he doesn't get it at all mm-hmm. he doesn't think it's a real business and mm-hmm. he thinks I should focus on the other business but um I just want to like share things and talk it out and and just get that release but I can't get that with him so I have like as you said before like being around the right people I have mm-hmm. like great friends now that I've 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 been with that are doing the same things like and and group programs and my coaching and my and the mastermind I'm in and being around those people now it's like I just feel so much happier that I can just go and like say how I'm feeling and no one to judge and mm-hmm. everyone to support and just let me talk it out and as, as well as the podcast like just being able to express how I feel it just means that I can really share my truth and be who I want to be because as you know from my chart like being in sharing my truth and being honest and in alignment is like so important to me like it's I'm I'm like the most honest person you'll ever mm-hmm. meet it's it's just like sometimes to my detriment because sometimes yeah. like, it's like my husband will be like sometimes you don't always have to say everything <laughs> but <laughs> it's like you just say too much sometimes because he's like the opposite mm-hmm. he's very much like he he wingles into it. he's a splenic but he um, can kind of wingle into whatever that person wants to hear whereas I'm just like that dress doesn't look good on you <laughs> like <laughs> like and they're, just, they're just because I want them to look good though it's always yeah. for like a better thing it's never in a negative way it's in a way of like I want you to be the best like I, mm-hmm. this one's going to be so much nicer and it's going to like show you off way better but I think yeah. sometimes I just need to be careful with how I say things so that's what I'm navigating a little bit with the, the whole self-projected self-projected <laughs> is saying the right things at the right time because it's all very I mean actually in your let me see if I have your chart up. So you have the channel of awakening, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's all about authentic behavior in the now and like you being authentic in the now. And sometimes that means in some ways, like expressing that, that authenticity in the now, it's like, there's a part of it that, um, can, you know, can be pretty blunt as well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, Oh yeah. Sorry. I'm also looking at your channel of curiosity, right? Ideas and and stimulating the minds of others and sharing those stories. But again, it's also unconscious. So sometimes like, even when you're expressing what's on your mind or like the ideas and the things that you see on your mind, it's like totally, you don't even realize it until after you've said it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, something that's scattered and it doesn't make much sense, but yeah, I just see it. Yeah. And I know like as projectors that can get us in a lot of trouble sometimes, Um, (laughs) but it is what it is. And um, like you said, it's like, as a self-projected projector, you need that safe space to just express yourself, you know, not necessarily to get any feedback or anything like that, just to have that outlet where you feel safe and people are listening to you and, you know, maybe even bounce things back to you, ask you questions so that you can respond to them in some way, not in the same responding way as a generator, but still something where you can explore deeper what it is that you're feeling around something. Right. Um, but I guess as knowing your design, um, what would you say are your like one to two superpowers that you've learned to appreciate over time? I think definitely, being open and honest and by me being open and honest gives other people the the permission to be open and honest as well because I think a lot of people are scared to say what they really think or really feel and I think when you go first and ask someone a question or or speak to someone but you kind of 
tell them a bit about your experience or what you're thinking or being a little bit vulnerable with with yourself then it lets them open up a little bit more it gives them a little bit more permission Mm -hmm. so I think um I used to think it wasn't a superpower because I was like I wish I wasn't so honest but now obviously learning about it I was like I definitely feel like that is a superpower because what I realized and especially with growing a business and building a team and being around a lot of people most people are not honest like most Mm -hmm. people are not honest with themselves or with other people like they just want to hide away and they're just Mm -hmm. just you just get this outer surface Mm -hmm. whereas everything I say comes deep from like deep within my soul of how I'm feeling and I think that can be a superpower if it's used correctly um and also just being hugely self-aware like I am somebody that has spent so many years over the past decade just understanding myself like to a deeper level of I am so so self-aware and to the point that like every even with health like with what I eat because I've had a lot of gut issues as well I am um, with everything I eat I know exactly how I'm going to feel with every like mouthful of mm-hmm. <laughs> like I could be like one extra bite of of like a, a chocolate or something and I know that that is going to make me feel so different than stopping like mm-hmm. at a certain amount like to that detail is like how much I know I know like if I, I if I don't go to the gym or get up and yeah. do my morning routine like I'm going to be so irritated mm-hmm. and not nice to like yeah. the kids or or Mikey I'll be irritated with them and I'll just be like shut them off because I'll be irritated at myself and then I'll have a slump at like three four o'clock and like I just know exactly how I'm going to feel with everything I do so then mm-hmm. I take the responsibility on myself to be like well you get to choose how you feel so whatever you do and what decisions you make is going to make you feel that way so the, the days that I mean I'm human so there's still and I have kids young kids the days that I don't go and the days that I do feel rubbish I don't put myself down about it but I take responsibility I just say well I didn't do that and or I I had a a rough night with the the little one so I couldn't get up so that's okay I'm just going to let myself have a chill day I'm not going to not going to bother about it so yeah I think self-awareness is another huge superpower Mm -hmm. yeah oh totally um and so when it comes to making decisions as a self-projected projector, right? It's like, we know that the G center is all about, or having that G center authority, having that self-projected authority is all about self-fulfillment and like going towards what leads you to self-fulfillment. So for you, when you're making these decisions, like, let's say when it come when it came down to, um, writing your book or starting one of your new ventures, how did you know that that was the path that you wanted to move towards like how did that feel like for you this was really difficult for me like even when I had completed my human design last year I knew what my authority was and I still didn't really understand how to use it properly I knew that I had to speak out but I just because I speak so much I'm like I'm (laughs) saying a lot of things so I couldn't like bring it down to like what is the thing though because I I like a lot of things um so what I really the process that I kind of went through was obviously trial and error like trying a lot of different things and then I just kept coming back to like what feels really truthful and honest to me like what what feels good like what like when when I was doing for example like when you're building a business online obviously you have to create a lot of content and I kept doing things that other people were doing like that was working for them I would maybe let's just say when the point and reels were out and everyone was doing mm-hmm. the, the point and reels and, <laughs> and I was like oh like, like, everyone's <laughs> doing these, yeah everyone was doing these point and reels and I was like I'm gonna have to do these point and reels because this is what everyone's doing and this is what's working and I was just doing it and I was just I felt so stupid like and I was just like <laughs> this just doesn't feel like me like it just <laughs> yeah. didn't feel like me at all um I felt 
really like just yucky like that's what I can say I just felt like I could I didn't even want to watch it so I think mm-hmm. if, if I don't want to watch it like <laughs> that can't yeah. be and I know not a lot of people like watching themselves but I can I can if, if it's something that feels good like a podcast I can listen to my podcast and not I don't like I used to hate my own voice but I've kind of got used to it now but I um I can listen to it with a kind of outer look of like is what I'm saying good not like what's my voice sounding like and and it doesn't feel when I listen back I'm like oh like that's quite that feels quite good like I'm saying quite good things there and that felt really like real like it felt really raw and real and I was like yeah I still believe that so I was like I believe what I'm doing so it felt real to me and when I was just copying other people I didn't even understand it myself so it didn't feel real for me it didn't feel authentic so I think when I was going to write the book when I started like doing some writing I I used to think I'm not a writer because I'm I think I must be dyslexic or something I'm not very good at um like I can't I can't read the long bits of text and things like Mm -hmm. that and I never thought like I was never good at vocabulary and like spelling and all of that but I was really good I'm very visually creative so I'm really good at um the words that I write, I, it, it, it's really good. It just needs like put together better. Yeah. Um, so I was writing loads of things and I was like, this is actually really good. And I really enjoyed it. And I was like, like, I actually love doing this. This is, this, this feels really good. So yeah, I think just feel it. You just know when it feels authentic, when it feels really good. And if it does, then I feel like that must be right. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like also another sign is like, if it doesn't feel icky, if it doesn't feel, um, suffocating, then it's also like a a green light, right? It's like, keep going. You're fine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and so I really wanted to shift into the open heart center because I know we didn't really have time to go into that yet, but, um, you know, you have a completely open heart center. Actually, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it right now. Um, and you know, being a projector entrepreneur, I feel like this is one of the most problematic areas that we have in terms of, you know, feeling worthy, trusting ourselves. And, you know, for you, especially as someone who grew up with a parent that instilled a lot of self-belief, um, how have you seen your open heart center play out in your life? Is it something that, that affects you that you know you've learned to navigate and work with yeah I think it definitely does and it still plays out it's this feeling of not being good enough or not knowing enough or having to prove myself all the time like I feel like I'm just constantly trying to prove myself and I don't know why because like I like my own things that I do I like my life like I like just how I do my day and designed it but I still feel like and it's not trying to prove myself to everyone it's mostly mm-hmm. like the people that are closest to me like I feel like I'm like even as I was saying with my husband like I feel like I'm at the start when I was doing this I was like I need to make sure I'm like earning this amount of money and getting these like hitting these figures because i will prove to him that this is a real business and like he's not going to believe me until I make the money because his value is always on like how much money you make um so I was just like felt like I was just in this state of proving and proving all the time and it it is it's exhausting it it feels Mm -hmm. like I am always what I always experience it like is I feel like I'm the one that's like constantly falling down and then just getting back up but nobody can see me like it's like it's like you're just falling everywhere but like everyone's looking somewhere else like nobody's Mm -hmm. seeing what you're doing and that's what it feels like it's probably not the truth but that that's just what it feels like it's like and it's hard because I always have this joke like like my husband is just perfectly good at everything like he's (laughs) like he plays professional football like he's really good at golf he's got like a really good memory he has like all of these things and everything just comes so easy to him like it's just natural and he's, he doesn't have to prove to anyone because he's just good mm-hmm. whereas like I always feel like I'm the one that's like just all over the place and I'm just like 
doing this and I'm yeah. doing that and I'm changing my mind all of the time um and it just feels like I'm trying to prove that I do know enough and I do have some knowledge and um I do have something to share with the world and I, I just recently though I've, I've and since I've, I've I've went into more what I love to do the self-mastery and self development um and teaching that I just felt like I just feel like so good that I'm like I just don't need to prove anymore and I can just share my message and Mm -hmm. whoever just trust that whoever needs to hear it will hear it and whoever doesn't they don't have to listen oh yeah I feel like it's almost like you're saying um love what you do so much that you're not even thinking about needing to prove yourself, right? It's like, you're not even thinking about that. It's not on your mind. Um, And I think that's so important for projectors, like whether you have that open heart or not, we're all, and even I guess non-projectors, but like, we're all in some ways and in some instances and circumstances in our life, feeling like we need to prove ourselves, Um, you know, and sometimes doubt our abilities, doubt our skills, doubt our value and what it is that we have to say. And so sometimes it's really important to just shift your focus to what it is that you do love rather than fix being fixated on, on what you lack or what you think you lack. Cause you know, it's not that we lack anything. It's that we, we feel like we do, we think we do. Um, and yeah, like just kind of following that self-fulfillment, especially for you, you know, being a self-projected projector, I think that's really, really important. And so are there any other ways or, you know, if for someone that's struggling, with this self-belief for someone that's struggling with, you know, feeling worthy about whether they have something valuable to share. Um, what advice would you give to them or what would you say to them in terms of navigating that? I would say like, start learning more about yourself. Like just start going really deep into understanding like what these beliefs are, like, why do you believe this? Why what like the first step is always to bring awareness so to understand like what it is you're feeling in the first place so if you you are feeling like you need to prove yourself or you are feeling neglected or if you are feeling like um nobody cares for you or whatever those feelings are like like journal them out write them out or if you're if you want to like film a video or just watch it back and listen to yourself if you are self-projected um or speak it out to someone that you trust that's in your circle of of people that that you can talk to Mm -hmm. and really just like bring awareness like I done um some coaching with one of my friends who does like trauma-informed coaching and we went deep into like the emotions of why I was feeling the way I was feeling and I'm obviously from childhood my experiences from there and and then I just got to detach myself there there's um you can do like cord cutting meditations um there is like inner child meditations where you can kind of um I do like frequency imprinting with clients where um we kind of feel the emotion and the feeling Mm -hmm. and then we we kind of create a new story around it and um yeah just kind of detach from that feeling which is really powerful because you can when it comes up you can feel it and then you can you can either write the story again or you can just cut the cord with it which is really important to do and then just to build that self-belief and build that confidence in yourself you need to start understanding like what your skills are what your strengths are like what you're good at and um, mm-hmm. focus on all the things that you really are good at and and what you love to do because when we start focusing on those we can then create like affirmations around it and we can start in, incorporating things into your day that aligns with your values and not just just going ahead with your day and just hoping for the best yeah you can actually live with a lot of people are very like they'll say they have these values like if people ask you that question like what are your values a lot of people will just say things that comes to the top of their head or they think sound good which isn't really their Mm -hmm. values so when I do exercises with my clients I always say what are you already doing in your day and then pull the values out from that and if you don't like them 
work on how we can change them to align with what you want your values to be or if is you do like them then that is what your values are because you're already doing that so for me it's yeah. like growth connection and um health like every day I always think about like what I can eat that's good to put in my body I always mm-hmm. go to the gym and, and yeah. move in terms of growth like I'm always learning like I don't I don't go a day without learning something like even if it's just a YouTube video or a podcast yeah or apart from one of the courses I've done or like I always learn and then connection like I spend time with my the kids I try and be present with them and put like my phone and stuff away when I feel like I want to spend that time and I value my relationships I I I message my friends to to meet up and um be in the communities that I'm in or I'll I'll engage in the mastermind conversation or something Mm -hmm. like that and that's how I got my three main values is because that's what I do every single day so look at what your values are what you want them to be and just try and bring yourself closer to alignment yeah it's so true it's like sometimes we try to think our way towards what our values are towards identifying it, but it's exactly what you said. It's like, what are you doing right now? Um, are your actions, like, what do your actions say about what your values are right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so true. Like so much information you can get just by observing what it is that you're doing now. Um, and yeah, I totally agree. It's like knowing yourself and understanding yourself and appreciating those strengths, double downing, double downing. Is that a word? Double. (laughs) Yeah. I guess double downing (laughs) on your strengths is, you know, one of the things that can help you navigate that, that feeling of like, what do I have to offer? Um, you know, what am I good at? Um, yeah, so, so true. Um, and I guess kind of to wrap things up, I wanted to ask you actually is there anything that you're working on right now that you want to share with us or you know if people want to work on that self-mastery with you and identify um what their strengths and superpowers are mostly I'm 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 dedicating myself to this book because I'm trying to get it done but um if you want to I've actually created a a quiz which is quite fun and it's it's actually based around human design but Mm -hmm. I've kind of renamed things and done it in like a more fun and interactive way so if you go to my website it's zoemckenna.com or my instagram which is zoexmckenna it's in the link um you can just go and do that quiz and it just asks you like fun questions about who you are and then you get like some emails after just like going a little bit deeper into your strengths and it's all around like human design um within business and building your strengths and awareness and everything like that so it's quite fun mm-hmm. quite a fun thing to do I feel like I need to do that <laughs> that sounds fun <laughs> awesome um but yeah thank you so so much Zoe for being real and raw and honest with us and sharing your self-projected projectorness I feel like you know I was just saying this to Zoe before we hopped on that like all of the self-projected projectors that I've had on this show and also just speak to in real life it's like they just speak their truth. They just kind of go with the flow and it's just so fun to be able to witness it and, and be in your energy when you're soundboarding, when you're self-projecting. Right. So thank you again, Zoe, for your energy today. And, um, yeah, (laughs) thank you so much. And just, yeah, on that point, I realized that it is as a self-projected projector, if you are doing content creation or you are in business, like writing out scripts and I'm following specific structures don't well for my own experience don't seem to work very well because like we feel like really robotic when we're like trying to (laughs) read something and like embracing just like this like like you sent me questions before um of like roughly what we were going to go through and I didn't really look look through it I just kind of glanced at it and I thought I'm just going to like answer as and when you ask because I just like to take I just like to listen to the question and answer one step at a time and I think as a self-projected projector it's it's really is probably another superpower of yours to just be able to speak on the fly and just speak from your truth and not have to worry about following structures or scripts or anything like that so I would definitely say just trust your voice and and just keep chatting but thank you so much for having me and I've loved being able to have this conversation